I'm gonna give a little something, something for that teacher program. I ain't know it. <laughs> the main speaker. So pray for me <laughs> as I pray. Um, and I'll pray right now before I start. Give uh, along with this morning in class. Lord, I just want to thank you for this day that you have not promised to us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that is new every morning, Father God. And Lord, I just ask that you speak through me and you can speak to your people and give them what they need, Father God. Let your name be glorified um, in this place on today. And I thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Like you said earlier, my name is Nikita Jones. I am the founder of Regal Genesis, which is a North Little Rock based um, initiative. But of course, we're all about helping everyone. Um, and our main mission is to empower African American youth and families. And part of that, our main focus is to do that by um, making sure that we are aware of our own African heritage and, and history. A lot of times we don't realize that we are actually great and we're kings and queens. So let me say, let me start this over. Good morning. Good morning. My fellow kings and queens. All right, all right. Beautiful black kings and queens. Yeah. So for the past year or so, we've been hearing Black Lives Matter a lot in the media, in the news, on Facebook, Instagram, and whatnot. What usually comes to mind when you hear it? Is it dead? Is it police brutality? Injustice? For me, it means so much more than that. To me, it means life and all that it is. It brings a sense of urgency and awareness. As Sister Angela Robinson said earlier, Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest, because you have ignored the law of your God. I will also ignore the truth. The definition of perish is to suffer death, typically in a violent or sudden way. Now, we've been seeing a lot of things in the media, right? A lot of young black men, and even women, losing their lives. And we wonder why. All life has a beginning, a genesis. And our beginnings lead us to achieve the present, which in turn leads us to the future. Black history is not just a thing once that once was. It's a past as well as the present and the future. And black history doesn't start at slavery, as to what we've been taught in school. Slavery just interrupted it. Black history starts at greatness. Did you know that we were kings and queens that ruled countries? That we created math and science right. right. and many other great things. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that from us, the whole entire world, was populated. Right. That says a lot. That yes, says that we are great. Yeah. So why are we in the predicament that we are in on today? We are not lazy. We are not violent. Right. Or the other stereotypical claims that the world has placed upon us. Right. We are great. There was once a time when I didn't know these things myself. Because there's so there's so much more to learn. And I'm still learning. Learning should always be a timeless process. So imagine how much greater we could all be if we took time to learn and embrace our true history. Our children can dream to be much more than professional athletes, singers, and rappers. One of our children could actually be the one who finds the cure for cancer. I believe it. And I'm going to speak on, um, like I said, I wasn't prepared.
here, so I'm just going to start speaking from my heart and my personal experience of being that I have for the past 10 years been working in the public charter school sector. And, uh, the, and the majority of the families and youth that I've been encountering are people of color. And, and I've also learned that it's not just people of color that are suffering from the same things that we're suffering. We all have the same struggles. We do. And I've noticed, and I had made, just like any other uh, young person here that has Facebook or whatever, I made a status and it actually turned into a poem. And, and I, I love poetry, that's another thing. I, I wanted to do that, but anyway. <laughs> but I wrote this, this status because I was just so disheartened. I, I felt so so bad, for lack of better words, at the moment. Because I had just got news of not the first, not the second, but the third former black male students that had come, um, that I had come to know, that had fallen quite to being um, lifelong citizens over to pity. And I'm like, Wow, these are kids that I actually know. Right. And these charter schools that I work at are very small. Very. And the fact that I come into contact with three, and actually just the other day, I got a text about one of my current students that was just locked up. And I'm like, wow. It, it, it's happening at an ever growing rate. And if you all watched the news back a couple of weeks ago, where there were several things that happened among the youth. Our youth. And I'm like, wow, if we only knew, if we only knew the things that have been instituted and put in place by our government and different systems that actually keep us from being our great And not even just being black, being that we are God's children. And he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of all.
the question is, what are we going to do with that? Mm. I understand praying and fasting, but what are you going to do about that? Like, God told Moses, why are you praying for me? What is it that you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand on this morning? I see you the wisdom, strength, in your own today. The church is actually called to be the headquarters of the community. We're supposed to be the ones impacting the community. We're supposed to be the ones feeding the homeless. We're the ones supposed to be.